Hi everybody, I'm at the Village Station Art Gallery here in Carf, Ontario. Um, and I'm here for a bit of a demo day, but it's very quiet at the moment, so I thought I would pop on and just talk a little bit about art resin and uh, the process that I use and some tips and tricks, since I'm here and it's quiet. Anyway, you'll see in the background that there's two pieces I've brought in. This one right there and this one over here, and yes, I cut myself a couple times today. Anyway, um, that illustrate the different ways that you can use resin actually to, uh, to paint with. And then I often use art resin as well um, to put a hard coating on top as a finishing, which I'm sure you've seen before, but I'll get up and I'll show you quickly. This is one of the pieces that I've done. This is an alcohol piece alcohol ink piece that's done on a Yupo paper and then pasted to the hard um, wood panel and then I finish it with some UV sprays um, by Krylon and then as well a couple of uh, really pretty coatings of art resin. So anyway, without further ado, for those of you who aren't familiar with art resin, art resin is very similar to whoops, a construction resin and it is basically um, resin and hardener that you mix together for a specific amount of time in a specific ratio. The ratio has to be exactly right. In this case, it's one to one. So for every part of uh, hardener, you put in the exact same of res resin. Doesn't matter which one you put in first, but you do need to put it in and stir it. And it is low VOC and non-yellowing. However, uh, I'm not really sure just how long um, the resin will go without turning yellow, um, but apparently it's quite a long time now, which is nice. Um, this particular brand, Art Resin, is um, pricey, but also one of the best on the market. And it's also developed by a couple that live in Toronto, so I like supporting the fact that this is a Canadian company. Anyway, um, should mention at this juncture that it's a good idea to be uh, in a ventilated room um, and as well use some sort of mask. This would be the bare minimum that you would use, but getting an actual proper mask uh, with the filters in it would be great. What else do I want to say? Um, yeah, so let's start talking about the tips and the tricks. So the first thing you need to know is that in order to get a beautiful finish on art resin, it's important to make sure that you actually mix it for the full three minutes that it says, um, minimum, and mix it fairly slowly but thoroughly, getting into all of the corners um, and everything. I use a specific stirrer that comes in a package from Art Resin. This is my big stir, so I, I use one for the actual combination um, of the big amount of resin. And then I have a favorite tool. This came from a stand mixer, actually. And I just really like the size of it and just the fact that it's got, you know, a bit of a nice edge just to smooth it. And this is how I spread the resin. Other people actually put on silicone gloves, which, by the way, I didn't bring, but you always wear gloves to cover your skin so that it doesn't get on, um, on you. But also, it's impossible to get off anything once it's on. It's very sticky and very hard to work with. Anyway, so this is a really, uh, this is one that I really enjoy using um, to smooth the resin and get it into all the nicks and crannies and the cracks. And then, let's see, I always have a central container that I use for the larger amount of resin. And then I have separate cups if I intend to separate the resin and add different materials, whether that be glass paints or whatever. Now, one of the fun things about resin is, is that it's its own media, or medium, I guess you could say. Um, so it's not acrylic based or oil based, it's its own media. So you can actually add um, whatever you want to it in order to create the art. And once it's cured, it doesn't have an issue with any other products. So for example, I really like the look of adding an alcohol ink like this to it. And, or you can actually buy resin tints that come from the companies themselves to tint the resin. You can add glitter from the art store. 
for actual mica powders, which are really quite lovely. You can also add your um, regular uh, acrylic inks. And then a couple of other favorite products are the Thai, which is a glass paint. This is a beautiful silvery pearl color. This is absolutely gorgeous. The black, I will show you on my piece that I brought in today, what that looks like. And then there's some fun ones that create really cool effects like Prism from Pideo, the fantasy line, or the moon. Um, and that creates little cells and stuff like that. Um, once the resin is cured, some of my favorite products, <laughs> Posca pens, these are amazing to create some gestural lines and stuff. You can draw right on the resin. And then you'll see in some of my pieces, I like to play with and mix together things like coarse gel, which is like a whole bunch of glass beads, um, which end up looking kind of like that. I also love to use this product. It's recycled, reharvested plastic chunks. And that's a really kind of fun textural element that you can add. And again, you can add these dry clear, but you can add any kind of pigment to them. Well, in this case, these are acrylic based, so it would be acrylic pigments. Uh, and this is also acrylic. Um, and this is a favorite product of mine as well, the Pearl Mica Flakes. And this is the large one, but you can see all of the beautiful metallic elements to it. So yeah, so without further ado, I'll just go take you to a couple of the pieces that I brought today, just as uh, examples so you can see the beautiful reflective qualities. I love mixing, mix, mixing the matte finish with the uh, shine of resin, but in this case, I mean, my gosh, every time I had a little leftover resin or paints or whatever, I, I played on this piece and I really like how it turned out, but you can see in this case, this is like the coarse gel is here and I've added broken mirror here and there's uh, tints, I think in this case, this is gel medium and then this resin had a little bit of a tint in it. And then down here, this is a resin poured with a bunch of different materials in it as well. And then over on this piece, which is 40 by 40 and called Floodlines, there's an there's basically a million different ways that I've used resin. So the most noticeable, of course, is this beautiful black. So it, it really does look like glass. Um, and so I use the black glass um, vitrail um, paint there. But uh, you can add, you can see me in there, you can add different tints and different textures in these cases. And this is an example of the plastic chunks, right? And then as well, let's see. And then there's those different sparkle gel and stuff in here. And yeah, and there's some of the pen work. So anyway, so in this case, I was painting with the resin. So anyway, so moving back, I'll just very quickly show you a couple more things. So one of the things for sure that you're going to need when you're doing the resin is fire. This is the funnest part of doing the resin in my mind. Um, you can use just a, a, a brulee torch or uh, just any kind of torch, but this is really uh, quite a fun one. It's called the Benzomatic. Uh, it's like a, a standard propane tank. And then this is a mag torch. And you can get these on Amazon or, you know, a hardware store, etc. But you turn, turn the dial to open the gas, and then all you do is press this to click it, and the fire comes out. And basically what you're doing is when you first pour the resin, let's pretend that this is fresh resin that's poured, you're going to actually apply the fire like this, and you will see all the little bubbles and air that got trapped in the resin popping on the surface and it basically creates that beautiful glossy surface when it cures. Speaking of curing, 
Art resin takes a good 24 hours to cure enough, um, well, maybe not quite that much time, but it does take a while to cure before uh, dust and stuff won't get trapped and stuck on it. Um, it takes several hours before, um, before you can really um, go near it. And then it takes um, a while longer, so like several days, I'd even say, for it to get truly hard. Um, and uh, so it's a little bit uh, of a pain in that particular case. And so I did bring an example of how I do a setup. So for example, I always, always, always do my resin on top of a thick plastic surface. And that's because the resin just uh, rips right off of the plastic when it's done. So if there is some spillage over the side of your resin piece, um, it just drops onto the plastic and then you can um, rip it up and throw it away or save it like I do, just in case I decide to do sculptures one day. Anyway, um, and then what you do is you need to elevate your canvas. I use paint cans and anything I can find that have the exact same height because you need it to be completely level when you go to pour the resin. Otherwise, so you would do this in several ways. And your floor is remarkably not level, so it can be a real pain. You have to sometimes stick under things underneath it or whatever. Um, but yeah, you definitely want it to be completely level or something like what happened with this will happen, which is that in certain corners, the resin will, let's see if I can really get a good view of it. Yeah, you can see how it's kind of, there we go. The resin will pool at one end and at this end, it got all wonky. So this isn't a successful piece. On that note, um, they're selling, and it's not too, too bad to have these canvases with the little edge on the uh, beveled edge on the side. Um, they do sell them specifically for resin. Um, the issue that I have with that is that if the first layer of resin doesn't turn out, or if you're painting and you want to create a multi-level piece, um, once, it's, uh, once it's reached its height, you can't do another level because it's going to spill over the side and look uh, rather strange. So in this case, because the first, the first layer really didn't turn out, I would actually have to completely figure out how to change this so that I, the edge doesn't matter because on this side, it's right up to the edge, like there's no, there's no chance for me to do another layer. Anyway, so that's just something to note, just in case um, you're thinking about this type of edge as opposed to a flat edge. Um, another thing to note is that using canvas is um, doable on small pieces or for very, very um, meticulous detailed people. You can do it on canvas, but you're going to need to prop up the canvas underneath so that it doesn't pool and it's completely flat which is why if I'm doing anything that's larger than say maybe 10 by 10, I use a wood board and I also just prefer wood, wood panels, but that way the resin doesn't pool in the middle and um, pull away from the edges while it's leveling itself. So that's a little something. So anyway, you can see right now I've kind of set it up. This isn't actually curing or anything. I'm not pouring the resin today, but I always put it down on some plastic. I always bolster it up so that the, so when it cures, it just drips off the edge. I'll tell you about the tape in a minute. And then I've also got what I've cut out. You can see this huge plastic um, piece of cardboard. So I've got a few of those pieces of cardboard. And what I do is when I'm done doing my pour and everything's good and I've done the torch, I actually get some big, big, big bottles that are empty. Many of them look, oh, just like this. And I'll put them on the edge, two, two and four, and then I bring the cardboard over to lay on top. And then on top of that, I drape some of my plastic, large plastic bags and stuff. This is my best attempt to make sure that dust, hair, and little particles of any kind don't get into the resin. They still do but it's my best attempt not to. So around my studio, in my closets, you'll find all these 
crazy empty containers that are the same height and rolls of like plastic that are all mottled and been used a million times and then of course these big um, sheets of cardboard that I'm using. Other people I've heard use um, old doors. Um, there's all sorts of things that people do. Um, I tried at one point. I bought these giant push pins because I thought, oh, that would be a great idea. And you know what? They're okay, but again, they're on the edge of the canvas. So if the resin pours over the top, then I find that the resin actually sticks to these and then they're no longer level because I can't, they're not a type of plastic that the resin comes off of easy. So that kind of only worked a little bit. So again, using something like this, they're underneath the canvas and they're not on, on near the edge. So they generally will be safe from getting covered in resin, which is great. Um, okay, so now the tape. Okay, you can talk to a lot of different people and a lot of different people will say that they have um, worked out the best tape and that's fine, everybody's different. This is the only product that I have truly found works for me. It is called Tuck Tape and it's meant to be a permanent tape. Um, and what I do, or at least what I've found works for me, is that on the wood panel, I will put the tape just on the edge, right, into, right, right to about here, and I will actually let the resin come over the side a little bit. And what that creates is that really pretty kind of soft dome edge. You'll see it there. It's kind of a very soft, very pretty edge. Um, and it's almost three, like you can actually see. Yeah, it's very pretty. You can even, like when you look at it sideways, you can actually see the painting, almost like it's got water on top of it. So other people will say you actually put the tape um, up over the edge, like up this high, so that it kind of pools into the tape. Like I said, I put it just to about there all the way around and I do it twice around. The first time around I make sure that it's stuck really 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 well. Um, really 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 well to the board um, and then the other one is for the resin that's dripping over when it does drip over um, to peel off more easily. If it's just the one layer I find that the combination of having a partly cured resin on the side, on the outside, and sticking to the board on the inside, um, the tape's not strong enough. It actually tends to like tear and rip um, and shred on you, which is a total pain in the butt. And that's the other note I wanted to make, which is that over four years of using resin, I have realized that you there's a very um, kind of there's a window of time when it's the best to take off the tape. And that is when it's almost cured, but not fully cured. Because if the resin is still soft, but it's dripped over significantly, you can still successfully peel it off without too much effort. If you wait too long and it's cured, it will shred the tape. It will um, require you to take a Dremel or like tools and stuff to, to, to chip away at it. Um, so yeah, but the thing is, is that when you're taking this tape off and it's almost cured, you have to be careful because if things fall in it or you touch it or anything um, breaks the surface, you're going to end up with a permanent scar on it. So it's not really the easiest thing to work with, but it sure does look really cool when it's done. So I can't seem to stay away from it. So um, now I was going to say the exact time that you would actually want to peel the tape. It kind of depends on the resin, but for art resin, um, stating that basically it's at 20 degrees and it's not too humid in the room, etc. I generally find that it's a good eight hour, between eight to 12 hours. That's a really good time to kind of uh, remove. You could probably push it up towards you know, uh, 14, 18 hours, 
Um, but certainly by the time you go through an entire night, like if, let's say you poured it at night and then you go back in the morning, um, it might at that point be getting pretty stiff to try and peel off. So what else? Yes, this is another fun tip. Um, if your art resin, so, so first of all, if your art resin does end up with uh, imperfections and you're not happy with it, you can always do a second coat. It's more expensive, of course, but that is why I have some sandpaper here because you wanna make sure that you actually rough up the, the, the surface of the resin before you put more resin on because it'll adhere better. Um, so what you do is you just basically scratch it with, with some sandpaper and then wash it so that it's dust free. Um, and even though it looks really awful and all scratched up, when you pour the other layer of resin, it will completely clear up and look stunning. Let's see what else. Ah yes, the containers. So, I told you about my two little utensils. I use this to stir in the big container and then I use this to spread. Always, always have lots of paper towel on hand because you wipe, the, you have to wipe with paper towel and then throw out the paper towel because again, resin is um, like oil. It is not, um, you know, a water-based product. So. It's going to get on everything, stick to everything, and be permanent with everything until you get rid of it. So um, lots of paper towel always around. But there again, the paper towel, don't put, don't put the resin or the pieces on the paper towel because it'll stick to it. You'll notice that I have cheap plastic containers. So I'm a big fan of, even though art isn't super um, eco-friendly, I'm a big fan of recycling and reusing. So in this case, um, I tend to recycle and reuse my plastics. Um, this is from a jug of nuts and bolts that Farm Boy sells, and I've used this container several times. I think these are like juice, uh, juice uh, cups from like McDonald's. I literally leave McDonald's with my, with my waste sometimes. Anyway, um, they look kind of funny, and that's because when I was done pouring my resin the last time I did resin, I turned them over like this on the corner of wherever I was working and let them drip down doop, 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 and then cure. And then like two days later, I went back and went and ripped them off. And then I got these. And basically, if I had another hand, I could show you. Actually, I'll show you in here. You can see that you can actually just peel it right off. And when you have two hands, you can actually peel it off even sometimes in one simple, yeah, in, one, in, one, uh, in one perfect little batch. But anyway, it just peels right out and then you can reuse. Because if you're using containers, you're reusing containers with art resin, you better make sure that those containers are not going to, that have nothing inside them because that will get into your resin and it's permanently there. Anyway, so that's kind of the rundown of the things I've learned in the process that I use. Um, no more than 30% of the pigment should go in the resin to the volume because at that point it won't cure. So, but that's pretty standard knowledge as well. What else might you want to know? I don't know. Send me some questions if you have them. And um, yeah, hopefully somebody stops in in the next little bit and we'll talk to you again. Bye.